Hello everyone. In this video we'll take a look at how we can apply principal component analysis or PCA using R. I'm going to break down the video into two parts. So the first part we'll try and understand what is PCA and uh, how we can apply PCA and why use PCA. And in the second part we'll uh, take a look at a demo. Uh, we'll use one of the inbuilt uh, PCA functions so that's uh, printcom uh, found within the stats library to perform principal component analysis. The key thing I wanted to highlight in this video is really to understand how uh, we can use the printcom command and uh, we'll take a look at um, some of the attributes and how we can understand and apply principal component analysis. So that's really the agenda for this video. I'm sure you've seen many other YouTube videos and uh, several documents, but hopefully uh, this video should uh, help you clearly understand how you can apply uh, functions uh, like the printcom uh, to do PCA analysis. So what is uh, PCA and uh, how do we utilize PCA? So principal component analysis is really a technique for it's referred to as uh, dimensionality reduction. Uh, if that seems like a mouthful, what it really means is, uh, let's just say for example, uh, you're working with a fairly large data set. Uh, it can have um, several, several observations, uh, but it has uh, several dimensions against which the observations have been captured on. Uh, so let's say you have more than, uh, say, 30 to uh, several hundreds of these dimensions. Um, now, chances are that can be overwhelming. It can be really hard to decipher which of those uh, dimensions uh, capture the essence of uh, the observations or the system as a whole. Um, so hence we can use uh, PCA. Uh, PCA is basically a technique that um, basically does uh, transformation of numbers um, and it does that using uh, correlation so that uh, you can take uh, from a set of large dimensions and really compress that into a much smaller uh, subset, what are called as principal components. Um, now the original data is basically remapped uh, and that's remapping is based on uh, the variation with, within the data. So that basically means that if you have a data set that's highly correlated and you have lots and lots of dimensions, um, then that's a better data set uh, that can be applied to uh, principal component analysis. And basically you can use PCA uh, to uncover facts around data, understand trends, and it's got various other applications uh, essentially uh, in compression like scenarios basically because it takes a larger data set and compresses that into much smaller principal components so that's really PCA in a nutshell uh, all in all it basically is dimensionality reduction so uh, within R we have uh, different uh, ways that we can calculate uh, principal component analysis uh, the one that I'm going to be using here is the printcom. There's also another PRcom. Uh, you can take a look at that uh, separately. Uh, so to get started, let's uh, let's dive into R. Um, and one, we need a sample data set that we want to work with. Um, so I'm going to use one of the popular um, out-of-the-box data sets that you get within R, the IRIS data set. Now, IRIS in itself is not the best uh, example uh, to use in PCA because um, the dimensions are really not that huge and uh, visual analysis and uh, you know various heuristics can be applied to help us analyze the data. But um, uh, this is like a hello world equivalent, if you will, of uh, applying PCA. So this is a good data set to work with. So step one is for us to prepare the data um, because uh, PCA can only work with a numerical column. So in this particular data set, uh, we have to remove the, the last column that's a species column. So let's, uh, let's create another data set. And uh, in that data set, we're gonna take the same iris data and um, we're gonna keep all the rows, but uh, basically we're gonna filter the columns, uh, the first four columns. Uh, the alternative, of course, is uh, or the simpler ways. Um, you know, I can just exclude uh, the last column. So now we've got our data, which um, is uh, ready to um, be um, run against uh, PCA. So 
next step is for us to run principal component analysis um, and I'm gonna use the PR comp so you remember I mentioned in um, the intro that there are multiple ways uh, we can apply principal component analysis and I'm gonna use the print comp function here we're going to apply um, against the data and I'm also going to provide, uh, I'm going to state the parameters as uh, we're going to use correlation and uh, we're going to make sure we capture the score. Alright, so now it's um, run the principal components and let's take a look at um, C. So here you can see that uh, it's calculated four different principal components uh, and that's because the input data had uh, uh, four features so it's calculated four components so it's dependent on the number of features that you pass um, and really trying to understand what does this all imply. Um, so let's start with the cumulative proportion. So basically what it's saying is component one is basically a reflection of uh, seven, close to 73 percent of uh, the variations in the data and uh, this is uh, uh, the second component which um, expresses uh, 22 percent uh, so that's uh, uh, 22 plus uh, close to 73 that's 95 um, close to 96 percent so basically it's um, a descending order of um, how how much a component is a reflection of the variation within the entire data set. So as you can see here the first two components collectively uh, describe up to uh, around 96 percent of the data so that would imply that uh, instead of us um, as per the initial data set looking at uh, four uh, of the features um, using principal component analysis uh, we can just look at um, principal component 1 and principal component 2 to collectively get a sense of um, the data itself. Now one of the often asked questions is how do you choose how many principal components should you consider like uh, here we have four components how, but how many components should we uh, consider um, in our analysis. Now there are several schools of thought there. Uh, the most uh, common ones suggest that um, l uh, consider as many components as is uh, when you have a reflection of 85% uh, or more of uh, the data. So in this particular case component 1 um, is only around 73% but component 1 plus component 2 gives us about 96% uh, so that basically means that we can consider component 1 and component 2. So uh, the other way to look at or, or um, uh, understanding how many uh, principal components you can use is uh, to draw um, an elbow curve. So Let's say, for example, we, if we were to plot uh, the principal components, it, again, it just gives a much nicer visual way to look at the data. Um, we can clearly see um, that component one um, uh, is a higher reflection, if you will, of the variation. But I can run the same uh, principal components as a line chart. Type is equal to line. By drawing it as a line chart, uh, this is what's popularly called as a elbow curve. Um, so essentially if you uh, picked up uh, uh, um, an input data with higher dimensions um, uh, resulting in higher um, number of principal components, you'll find that um, the, the line kind of like tapers off here and this is what's po uh, popularly called as an elbow curve. So that basically means that uh, do not consider any of the principal components from the point of the elbow curve. Uh, that's another way and further still there are um, other schools of thought that tell you uh, to use the standard deviation uh, itself so um, a value about one is considered good. So again you'll find that there could be different ways and even uh, competing ways uh, to arrive at the number of principal components but again it ultimately depends on the domain of the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, we can do some further analysis here so um, we can take a look at um, uh, another visual way to look at the principal components so um, if we take a look at um, by plot 
So here, um, it's another interesting visual way of analyzing principal components. Um, so here we can see that uh, the bearing of um, the initial inputs uh, and uh, how it pertains to the overall direction of that variance. Now, the noise that you're seeing here is basically the number of observations. So I think we've, let's see, uh, dim. Uh, there were 150 observations, so hence you'll see all the the noise here. Basically, it's a plot of the 150 observations, and here you can clearly see that all the other three uh, input um, uh, features basically um, uh, tend towards the same direction except sepal width. So that gives us an idea of how sepal width, um, you know, as an input pertains to the variation. Um, the other useful thing to look at the principal component is the actual loading itself. So if you take a look at um, attributes of uh, the principal component, you'll notice that uh, there's a bunch of attributes here. And uh, one of the things we are very interested in is in, is in the loading. So PC loadings. So here you can actually see that uh, the first component, which you remember was about 73%, uh, is uh, this is basically a reflection of how the individual um, dimensions have contributed to the first component. And you'll notice in the second component, uh, it's uh, not even considering the length and the width. So it, it gives us an idea as to how the input dimensions have a bearing on the uh, the principal components that have been identified. And then uh, finally, when it comes to um, the actual data itself, so uh, we talked about the fact that when you use uh, a principal component analysis, it basically transforms your initial data uh, into a set of correlated variables into um, the actual principal components itself. So uh, we can take a look at scores here. So uh, that's PC scores. So here you'll notice that it still has the same uh, 150 um, uh, observations, but it's basically mapped your input uh, into uh, a completely different uh, set of transformations using correlation. So in summary, uh, we have taken a look at um, how we can apply principal component analysis uh, using R in this quick video. Hope to see you on the next video. Thanks everyone for watching.